shows and stuff. I'm your host, Doug McLean. <laughs> Frank Mancina. What's going on? What do you think is going to happen in the future? So anyway, I mean, usually that's how I take a full bath. Um, <laughs> you know, top to bottom. Well, hello! Frank, you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Doug Liano. Welcome, everyone, to the latest installment of Road Shows and Stuff. I'm your host, Doug McLean, here with my partner in crime, Frank. Mancina, Doug. Mancina. Three C's. Three C's. That's right. This is a pretty special episode for a number of reasons. Uh, this is the finale of season seven. It's right. been a season three. It's been a long time in the making. We're pretty excited about this. We're two days away from Christmas. So we're yes. closing in. <laughs> <laughs> in the internet world it's been in the internet world we're shrouded in mystery that's what right. people love about it they don't know where we are what time of year it is or what year it is what are we talking about today frank it's pretty important actually in pretty the world of Doug. mobile marketing that's right uh so we're talking about the difficulties of roadshow transportation right this is something uh we have um have challenges over over the years trying to explain the, the difficulties and things to look out for when you're scheduling your roadshow. Um, so yeah. it's, it's it's important that uh, not only obviously our team understands it, but uh, the client team understands it um, so they can help the, uh, develop the schedule properly. Yeah, for logistical planning. And I think this applies whether you're part of a regional program, you're just sticking, say, in the Midwest, for example, or you're in a tour that crisscrosses all of North America, Canada. Uh, you know, anywhere in the U.S. from Maine, San Diego, Seattle to Miami. I think this is all really pertinent when planning and when scheduling. But primarily, we're discussing the travel from A to B. Exactly. And what's involved with that. Not the event itself, not the event site, all of the work required to set up and tear down and the planning that goes into that. But actually rolling down the road from city to city. So where do we kick off? Where do we start? Yeah, so uh, one of the main things is when uh, when someone's looking at, hey, I want to be in Miami, then I want to be in Texas, you know, or, or in Austin, you know, they they'll Google it and they'll say, hey, you know, it's only, only like <laughs> yeah. twenty five hour yeah. drive or whatever. But really, that's just the car drive, right? That's a car sure. driving. So it's important to understand that the travel time for a road show is much different than your travel time. In yes. The car. Yeah, and there's so, a million different variables and a million different reasons why. So you have to plan your stops in advance. So that pit stop that you take in a car that could take 15, 20 minutes may take an hour, may take an hour and a half for a truck. And that's true of anything, whether it's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, whether it's refueling, maintenance, wash, anything. So, yeah, and plus the speed, you just can't go as fast of a car as a car, right? You know, even sure. in Canada, the, we're going in kilometers, right? Which... Uh, Doug, what's the conversion rate there? Uh, I think one mile an hour is 19.6 kilometers. Close. Uh, So, you know, so we're going a little bit slower in Canada uh, as opposed to, you know, going your 60 or 70 miles an hour. Yeah, truck speed limits are different, right? Yeah. Completely different. And almost always, I can't can't think of an instance where they're not, but they're much lower. Than car yeah. traffic. Now it's 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 advantageous in some parts of the U.S. I know, like the Southwest United States, Arizona, Texas, New Mexico. They have pretty high truck speed limits, uh, seventy miles an hour. I think you can cap out some places seventy five. I know car traffic can be as high as seventy five. I think parts of Wyoming are like eighty miles an hour for cars. But because of that, you can make good time. Right? Mm-hmm. Weather is usually pretty good. But there are some real problem areas like California, where truck speed limits in most places are 55 miles an hour. I think you're 60 miles an hour in some places. So when you're traversing even a state like California, it can take an incredible amount of time. So things to take into consideration are lo- location, where you are geographically. Parts of the, the far, western, um, far western Canadian provinces are the same way. Yep. Lower speed limits, mountainous terrain, uh, something yeah, to but- consider too. And I was going to say, with this mount- mountainous terrain, you have to always monitor the weather, right? Whether yes. it's in the winter where you have avalanches or snowstorms <laughs> yeah. or in the summer where you potentially have mudslides. I know there's the Trans-Canada Highway was, uh, it was last summer. It was, uh, it was completely 
you know, the road that connected essentially Alberta or um, Calgary to Vancouver, yeah, you know, was cut off from from mudslides, right? So, sure. You know, you have to find different routes. You know, there's low bridges in some regions of the United States and Canada, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, the old infrastructure, you have to kind of navigate around, take a different Especially route. in the eastern part of the United States, cities like mm-hmm. Philadelphia, you stay as far north as you can in the summer and vice versa in the winter, just to keep weather on your side. You should always allow for extra time. And then always kind of have a contingency plan too. Um, and usually when we talk about contingency plans, what I like to do especially before a huge event, is block off as much time as you can, maybe even a calendar week before you have to make an event, especially when there's like a marshalling yard, uh, exhibitors Mm -hmm. have to line up to get into a facility, things like that. Uh, You know, in good weather, obviously not as much of an issue. but And then you can have areas in in both countries that are kind of a beast of their own, like New York. Yeah, right. Which has its own DOT office in itself, right? So. <laughs> yeah, which doesn't even allow full size fifty three foot trailers until, uh, or between a, rather, is it midnight? I think it's 10, 10 p.m. to five a.m. Ten p.m. to five a.m. Okay, and yeah. I know the times that we've gone there with our largest vehicles, our double expandables. We always have to have a police escort. Police escort Typically, yeah. we go in after midnight. Yeah. So you always have to take that in consideration, and that's because of the you know reduced amounts of traffic. It's in theory, easier to navigate around the streets, but you better be sure that you're no longer moving by 5 a.m. Because yeah. once that, you know, day-to-day traffic picks up, it's insane. Not to mention the amount of permitting required. You have to meet your escorts, you know, on the other side of the bridge or the tunnel before you go into the city. Um, and then they literally have to guide you. So in regard to preparation, that has to take place weeks and weeks and weeks in advance be- before going into major markets like that. And like we touched upon earlier too, going into cities like Philadelphia that have ancient infrastructures or even like downtown Boston, something like that, you really have to route yourself carefully. Mm. You can't just jump on Google Maps and be like, oh, you just take a left on Jefferson and you know, right on yeah. you know, whatever. And you're parking in some parking lot because chances are it, it's not going to work out. And even like parking in like a Seattle or a Vancouver, BC, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's so uneven there. It's, it's so many, you know, parking is parking on a level ground down there, especially in a large format vehicle. You are, yeah. you know, it's very difficult, if not impossible to find locations um, where you can. And if and when you do, it's pretty expensive. <laughs> well, I remember too, back in the day in BC, we used to have to, I think it was uh, over width permits. Yes. Because when you're driving on mountain roads, when you're taking a tight turn, the trailer may swing into the opposing lane of traffic. Uh, and because of that, they want to limit length. Limit length, but also the, the axle spread too. Oh, for, axle spread too. Yeah, for turning yeah. radius. Yeah. So yeah, I believe it's only an 8-1 spread. In, okay. In the loud Do you still have to pull a permit for that? Do we still have to under 53? No, you don't. But if okay. you are um, a 10-1 spread, which we've had in the past. Yeah. Do so. you can get, or, or you can get in trouble if you're caught. That's right. Yeah, which we would never do. No, no. Nope. Okay, perfect DOT record. Hello. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we want to touch on here, Frank? Uh, I guess just maybe just just touching again on the the parking locations, right? You know, sure. You have to when you get into a city early enough, you can do the dry runs uh, to make sure there's no you know construction or making sure. Sure. That, um, you know, you have that route is route in, especially in your, when you're in a larger city, you don't want to, you know, you're, you're moving this large vehicle around. You don't want to be stuck in traffic or in, <laughs> in a bad situation because you can't just On a, on a street, that would be impossible to turn around. <laughs> We've been in situations like that and it's, ta- it takes forever. <laughs> or the worst case scenario is when you vet a site weeks beforehand, you get to the site and there's like one car sitting there. Oh. Like right in the middle of the lot. The owner is nowhere to be seen. It's like four in the it's like four in the morning. The lot owner isn't even there, and you have no clue what to do. God, that's crazy. Funny story. One of our uh, can't wait our, to hear it, Frank. One of our AE was our AEs was vetting a site for a client, and uh, we use Google and Google Maps. And oh, sure, yeah, Google Street View. Um, so she went on the Google Street View. She saw another one of our trailers in that exact spot. I <laughs> go. <Like>, oh. <laughs> Yeah, of course. You're saying from another there. tour from, from a previous from a different tour from a different tour. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, oh, we've yeah, we've we actually can, we've we run into that a couple times. Just looking <laughs> in major cities, especially like near convention centers and stuff, we've seen 
Well, we've been on the road for like 30 years, so <laughs> that makes sense. That is funny. Uh, yeah, so basically, in a nutshell, tons of pre-planning. Anything could happen. Always have a contingency plan. Time is your greatest asset when doing these things. Always be aware of weather. Always make sure you're prepared. Um, I know we like to have all of our vehicles clean before every event, so we always swing through truck washes. I personally have been in a truck wash line that's been two hours long. It takes forever, and there's no other truck wash between your location and the city that you're coming into. Uh, you know, just things like that that you have to consider. And plus, you got to expect the unexpected, right? You know, sometimes oh you just blow a tire. You just blow a tire, and oh you're on the side God. of a road in Wyoming for 14 hours. <laughs> Not that long, but <laughs> that's our new tagline: 2023. Expect the unexpected. That's right. That was also my the dad. name of my that's cologne. My, <laughs> my, dad always to, my dad always used to tell me that when uh, he took me driving at the tender age of 12. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Illegally in BC? No, just around the neighborhood. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, is that it? Do you have anything else to add? That's it, Doug. That's it. Okay. Well, that brings us to our favorite part of the show. Drum roll. Stuff. Stuff. Here it is. Stuff. So <laughs> what are we talking about today, Frank? <laughs> Doug. Um, oh. Oh, okay. We got two. Since it's the season finale, I got two. We'll make okay. it brief. Okay. Okay. If God cornered you on your drive home and said, Frank, for the rest of eternity, for all of mankind, human beings can only consume either chocolate or vanilla ice cream. What would you choose? Chocolate. For humanity? What? Why? It's so good. It is There's so, so many good. different types of chocolate. But this is this Dark is chocolate, God. milk chocolate. Frank, this is God. Chocolate. This can't be a selfish answer, right? You have to consider the rest of humanity, not only yourself and your neighbors, but for the future as well. Do you really yeah, think they that, prefer chocolate to vanilla? Hundred percent. There's like two flavors of vanilla: French vanilla and vanilla, vanilla, <laughs> <laughs> and fake vanilla. Yeah. You know what I mean? At least you have vanilla like, bean. The healthy folk would want the cocoa. Well, there's like eight million types of chocolate, too. There's like Dutch chocolate, chocolate fudge, um, milk Milk chocolate. chocolate, My fave. Cacao, 98% chocolate. Uh, (laughs) All right. How about you, What would you say? What would you do? Uh, Your answer, believe it or not, was correct. God would (laughs) prefer that you say chocolate. Okay, next and final question. Okay. Bigfoot, aliens, and ghosts. Which of the three do you believe are real and why? Go ahead. Frank, you have the floor. You have 30 seconds. <laughs> Ghosts, man. Okay, why? Why? Because I saw one. All right. Well, that's it, everyone. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. I have never seen one. <laughs> Did you but, see one, though? Did you see no, one? no. But uh, my old cousin the cr- saw one in a, in a bathtub once. So oh, yes. kids and kids don't, uh, don't lie about that stuff. Yeah, no, kids are like, especially in tune to like, you know, see ghosts and stuff. But yeah, I, I agree. There's like energy in the body. And just because we can't explain it right now, can't mean that there's something that's like left over after we pass. Right. Mm-hmm. Or certain energies that are trapped in certain areas. I don't want to lose mm-hmm. you <laughs> on Kinetio physics. Seems to uh, watch a lot of like, uh, paranormal <laughs> no, but shows. I, but I, but I just think because of the expanse of the universe, aliens are probably in whatever form that is. That an yeah. alien doesn't necessarily have to mean like a twelve foot tall green man with you know twenty seven fingers. They de- they've also declassified a ton of like UFO. They have. They have I've read through most of it uh, before this uh, episode, <laughs> and yeah, it's it's pretty compelling. So, Frank, with that being said, uh, another amazing season. We got a lot to look forward to next season. I think we're kicking off season four, talking about. Um... All right. So <laughs> a special thanks to all of our uh, all of our listeners. Uh, hopefully the three of you are listening right now. And uh, if you'd like thanks, more Mom. information on MRA <laughs> or what we do, what we can do, visit our social media platforms, social media websites, follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. All right. Um, the other one, YouTube. Twitter's still running. Elon took over this morning. Timestamp. Uh, <laughs> check us out on our website, www.gomra.com. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you, Frank. And thank you, everyone. And we will see you soon. <laughs> I think we're recording.